clean, so crisp, and so on point. I'm, they're, they just have it dialed in, and all of their offerings are fantastic. I mean, everyone loves lunch. My favorite is actually Peeper, which is uh, the pale ale, supposed to be IPA, but you can't go wrong with Maine Beer Co. Um, but yeah, we get them down here, actually, which, which yeah. They're, they, we luckily get them down here, and they are fantastic. You were right. Yeah. yeah, they make a brown ale though, and it's it's in regular rotation. So I mean that's a little bit that's like a half a half a peg down for that one, but I imagine it's a great brown ale, and the people who like brown ales love it. Yeah, the um the other one I I uh, would love to throw out for for all the hot heads too is I think Bellflower is um, doing some of the best hoppy beers right now. My favorite is, is Into the Kaleidoscope, and they um. They're using a Pilsner malt uh, as a base, which just allows some more of the complex uh, hop flavor to kind of come through. You get some more more floral characteristics of those hops that can sometimes get covered up in other IPAs. Um, so you get that citrus and you get that floral note, and I think what they're doing is pretty pretty outstanding. Um, they're newer than a lot of them, but um, yeah, people up here they it can't stay on the shelf. It's pretty pretty amazing. Um, and then I, I obviously have to say Allagash too. It's, it's incredible. Everyone knows Allagash White. What they're doing here is incredible. Their their barrel program, um, their creativity, and um, the cool ship. I mean, everything they're doing is is really unique and kind of forward thinking. Very very cool. Yeah, and they they do a lot like most other local breweries, including Batson, in, in really you know trying to put forward everything they can to be good stewards of the local main environment, you know, from ingredient selection um, to, you know, processes that are as environmentally friendly as possible. So um, they do a great job. They also spearhead a huge local recycling program. Um, it's difficult to for some smaller breweries to arrange for some of the materials that we use to be recycled, whereas they say, hey, on Fridays, or Thursdays, bring it up. We have giant containers, and then they are a point of distribution for like the pack tax recycling. Um, so yeah, they, it's it's just really great. Um, and they're like that's pretty much you know ingrained in just about any mainer and any main brewery just to really be a good steward of the local environment. And it's it's amazing up here. I mean, just as we're I'm thinking right here, there are just so many that we could just mention. I mean, from Bissell Brothers to Foundation to our neighbors Bandit. I mean, there are so many quality breweries up here that you just know you go in, you're going to get something that you really enjoy. So it's 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 amazing. Throw a dart, you're going to hit something pretty incredible. Yeah, and if you're, you know, coming by way of I-95 North, definitely take a quick detour and hit up uh, Stone Face Brewing Company. I did work there, as I mentioned earlier. Um there's no bad blood, and there's plenty of good beer. So I'd highly recommend people <laughs> stop by there. Still good friends with those guys. I love that. Now, uh, you guys, when we were uh, talking back and forth through email, you all mentioned uh, pond hockey and hockey fights with uh, with uh, brewers. Uh, talk to us about the hockey scene up in Maine and obviously pond hockey because, like you said, it gets much colder than it does down here. So pond hockey would definitely be a thing that y'all would have that we would definitely not have. Yeah, I mean, that's even true for the Philadelphia area. I think I was only able to get out on ice safely maybe twice, you know, during my childhood. Um, and there were plenty of ponds around. I wasn't right in Philadelphia. So there were plenty of ponds around. It, just, it didn't get cold enough for long enough there. So that was a real treat moving up here being able just to go out on, you know, a lake that's across the street from my uh, my house, uh, which was you know, not a coincidence that that was there when we were selecting a, a place to move to. I was like, yeah, let's let's go there. That, that looks – near that water seems cool. Uh, so, yeah, getting out to uh, to play pond hockey, it's just fun, you know. That's one of those – one of those times where you definitely take a couple of the uh, higher ABV beers with you and just kind of put your skates – in a bag <laughs> with the beer, walk across the street, and yeah, just kind of play around, you know, shoot a puck around. We had one tournament um, a few years back on that that body of water, but unfortunately, it's just it's unreliable as to when the ice is going to be in the right condition for that tournament. So that one's canceled, mm. and there still are some really large uh, 
uh, hockey tournaments that happen locally where people come from all over the place to play in. Um, and yeah, I mean, hockey, uh, pond hockey is really not a fighting style of hockey. It's no check. You're no slap shot. You're not really supposed to lift the puck above the knee. Um, and there's this weird little goal that like, it's, it's like a, it's like a bunch of two by fours and it's only four inches high and it's got a couple of holes in it. So when I first played, I'm like, what the hell is this? Um, so it, it makes it challenging in that way. Um, so that's fun, but yeah, there aren't a lot of fights in pond hockey. Um, I did get in a fight with a former coworker playing pond hockey, but it was not actually a, uh, <laughs> a real fight, you know, like we're, we're good, but I figured it would be fun. Like I was covering him and, uh, you know, he passed the puck and I was like, you know what, this is going to make it kind of fun. So I went to pull the jersey over his head, you know, well, first we dropped the gloves and squared up. I went to pull the jersey over his head. Um, and in the process, pulled his helmet off. And that's the point where I said, okay, hey, by the way, man, this is, this is a joke. And this is a joke here. So we continued to act like we were going to, uh, you know, have a nice fist of cuffs there. And people were pounding on the glass. They just thought it was hilarious. And then, yeah, we, we hugged it off and skated away. And that was the rest of the day. Um, there were a couple of altercations that were a little bit more genuine. Um, but you know, that, that's, you know, that happens sometimes when people, you know, have a couple of beers and get a little rowdy, but uh, yeah, it's it's just fun. It's <laughs> nice to be able to enjoy the, the natural environment in that way. That's awesome. Yeah, I was going to say because we you know we have hockey uh, down here. We, you know, we we've won a Stanley Cup before, and hopefully in the future we'll win another one. Uh, and then we have so many you know youth hockey, which the hockey scene in Texas people don't think about, but it's growing like crazy. And uh, you know, but we don't we aren't lucky enough to have anything like pond hockey and so I had to I had to ask about that. Yeah. Now I have a segment on the show I call it the five count, which is five random questions. Y'all answer as quick as possible. Uh, fire away. Okay. If you were on America's Got Talent, what would your talent be? God snark. Oh man, that was gonna be mine. <laughs> Rapid fire. Rapid fire. Rapid fire. Thank first thing, you. First thing that I would do, um, learn how to ride a unicycle. <laughs> there you go. On the spot. Learn, learn right there. <laughs> we, we definitely wouldn't win. Let's do what we're saying. <laughs> if you were a pro wrestler or MMA fighter, what would your name be? Oh, I actually did a little bit of research here. So um, I went online and, oh. you know, like I've used before, I've seen some like Wu Tang name generators, and um, I decided right. <laughs> to, you know, I decided to uh, use these generators to come up with some names for um, hmm. both John and myself. So uh, some names that that I found. I'll, I'll allow John to sort of, you know, put others forward if you would like to. Is uh, Evil Zodiac was one of them, and the other one was Ooh, that's a good Hawk one. Hawk Pile Driver Petite and um, his finishing move is the leaping press, and he was a face known for his sense of humor. Um, so that's that's the, the work that I did on John's, uh, John's behalf here. Um, for myself, I got some. Uh, I got Kurt Quick Draw Brown. My uh, finishing move was the karate bomb, which I was like, all right, I've done karate in the past, so I can. Caesar would pull off a crack bomb. Um, and, yeah, I was known for my smack talk, according to that generator. And uh, the other generator I used uh, was Amatory Demon, and I had to look up the first word. Um, and then I was like, oh, okay, now this really just sounds like a, like a Glenn Danzig album title, like, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Not, not really um, a, a good, you know, description of my character but i thought it was a you know definitely a good danzig album yeah I, uh definitely my old softball album. nickname old softball nickname was el burro so i i feel like that's I, I maybe like we could just el burro picante like you know, i feel like the spicy ass is kind of a nice nice wrestling name so i think i can roll with that there's so much that goes into that and uh you know i feel like you know just you sitting on someone I think would be a good finisher just with that name. There you go. <laughs> now, if you were hosting a dinner, uh, what four dinner guests, uh, dead or alive, would you want there? 
Oh, I'd go Ben Franklin just because he did a ton and he's a Philly guy. Oh, let me see. Um, Einstein, because I'm a nerd and I'd like to talk, you know, relativity with him or at least attempt to understand it. Um, let's see here. Um, uh, Subramanian Chandrasekhar, he's another astronomer, which is an, a, a, you know, real big interest of mine. And, uh, let me see. Who, who is the third person? It's hard for me to not go toward, um, to lean toward scientists. So, um, John Candy, just to, to keep us all chucking, oh, laughing. That would be so much fun. <laughs> Yeah, John, John Candy, a brewer, and a bunch of scientists. It'd be, be a, a weird dinner, but it'd be fun. I think I've got to go. I'm glad you chose Ben Franklin because I, I was nervous for to take Lincoln. I want Lincoln. Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously uh-huh. for the leadership alone. Um, see, I mean, <laughs> Lincoln probably, maybe John Belushi, Bob Marley, and mm. you're not going to have a dinner without Larry Bird. So Larry Bird is going to be there. For sure, he probably is my number one, actually. So Larry Bird, then Lincoln, Belushi, and and maybe Bob Marley. I need like that. If it's not too late, uh, no offense to John Candy and John Candy's family, but I would like to sub Chris Farley in in that place. Oh, that's a good one. Oh man, that's a good one. I don't. Yeah, like cause you can you can go so many different directions. Like you said, do you want all scientists? Do you want more funny people? Do you want like how do you want just a motley crew of people because those are honestly the best. Uh, parties in general, but yeah, I, I, those are all solid choices. Uh, who, who, or what inspires you? Oh, he pointed to me. Put me on the spot. Um, I mean, I, I think that's a really good question. There's a lot that inspires me. I, I tend to think good people inspire me. That's what I, I really like to see. I like to look around, especially in the main community. I like to see people that are thinking beyond themselves, trying to help the community, trying to help other people. Um, that's what really, I think, gives me such a great feeling and, and inspires me, is seeing other people go out of their way to help other people. Yeah, I'd say mine, mine's a pretty similar response. I would just say, you know, it's it's the individuals within our local uh, brewing and service industry community just because they're such great people and we're always kind of like bouncing ideas off of one another and inspiring one another to try new things and do different things. So it's, uh, you know, it's it's a pretty close to home source of inspiration, which is awesome. That's so great. Uh, and what would you tell your 17-year-old self? This is the first of many beers you're going to have over the course of your life. <laughs> Also, you don't have to hide it from your parents forever. <laughs> yeah, no, I would just say be true to who you are, and it's going to be a great ride. So enjoy it. But for the record, I'm in no way encouraging underage drinking. <laughs> no, no one is. No, of course not. None of us have, have, have drank underage, but none of that makes any sense. <laughs> Now, if people wanted to find out more about y'all, uh, follow you online, try your beers, visit your location, how can they do all the things? Uh, well, we do have a, a, you know, a website that has a lot of information about the beers that we have currently, um, and that's also in the process of being revamped with, uh, we brought a new marketing person on board who's really going to hone in and refine the website that we already have. Um, you know, there are the beer rating apps that people use. It's a source of information. I kind of take them with a grain of salt because, um, <laughs> you know, you don't know how many beers somebody's had before they decide to rate your beer. Or they might, I've seen things like, you know, they'll rate it one star out of five. This is good for a Pilsner, but yeah. I don't like Pilsner. And it's like, all right. So, I mean, and there's, there's information there, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I'd say the best, the best spot would be Baton River Beer, uh, at Instagram, uh, yeah. on Instagram. That's um, again, Dave, our, our label designer, is uh, running our our Instagram page, and it's uh, it's very exciting. All the information that that you need can be found there. Um, yeah, and then FastenRiver.com uh, is our website that you can find us, 
And, um, yeah, we, we really hope that, that people do. And, um, 